Hey cousins, I'm Shamaya. It's like papaya, except it's not, and this is plot twist, please. Let's get into it. Welcome, cousins, to the first mini sode of this season. I did have mini sodes before, but then I stopped recording them because I didn't think they were super useful. But I have heard from some of you that you really miss the mini sodes and that you need some bite sized knowledge every now and then. And as much as you do value those four course meals, You still like to nibble. Well, here's a little niblet for you. Today, I wanted to talk about being friendly. Because if you haven't noticed, it's actually very popular to be a loner. There is an article called The Mainstreaming of Loserdom that popped up on my feed the other day. And I think it's really fascinating because basically what it's talking about is the normalization of being alone and due to internet culture and kind of what happens when a bunch of introverts on the internet feed into each other's behaviors and normalize each other's behaviors over time. We just kind of make it okay to not be social to the point even that being social becomes demonized. We come up with phrases like nobody owes you anything and we claim that saying hello to a stranger is deep emotional labor that we're incapable of participating in and we make it okay to isolate ourselves. This is the result over time. I think another layer to this is the fact that a lot of neurodivergent people feel a sort of kinship with one another online, especially when it comes to isolating ourselves. I mean, a lot of us has found it really taxing to be social, especially when you factor in the amount of trauma that comes from us being social, you know, the the amount of isolation we experience and rejection we experience as a result of trying to be And as much as I understand that pain, I do think we need to stretch our brains a little bit when it comes to how capable we think we are of being social or even being cordial in public. Granted, there are so many different kinds of neuroses involved in neurodivergence and even within autism spectrum disorder that we need to consider when having these kinds of conversations where we're critiquing other people's actions and critiquing other people's ways of life. And it may may even seem to some people that we're critiquing people's specific abilities to interact with other people. But I want to make it very clear that that's not what I'm doing. I'm not saying if you don't talk to strangers every single day, or if you don't go out of your way to say hi to a stranger walking down the street, then you're a bad person, or you choose to be isolated. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am asking for is nuance. So there are a few different points I want to go across, um, three of them to be exact. So this isn't going to be a super long episode. Hopefully it'll be about 10 minutes. And remember, it's just a snack. The first thing I want to talk about is what it actually means to be friendly. Because I did, I'm on threads now, I post on there pretty frequently. But I said, autistic folks, you know in order to have friends, you have to actually be friendly, right? Now to some of you, this might seem self-explanatory. But to others, it might seem like a big ask to be friendly. That's why I think that there is a big distinction and if there's not, then there should be a big distinction. And I will say, friendliness that and pain, emotional labor, that embarrassment. Right after I post this of question, being, feeling like and after I started giving a like good amount of responses, to you for years, I realized like, that people have different the whole, definitions like, of what the whole friendliness time, is. The whole time, like, people that's have different thresholds for the extent of the friendliness that they are able to offer to people they don't know or people who they don't feel a universe of obligation toward. If you need to brush up on that definition of universal obligation, go ahead and check out my latest larger podcast episode. I also think it's very impractical to say that you don't have the emotional capacity to show up for the people in your life. Like the people who are demonstrating healthy boundaries and healthy levels of investment into your relationship. Like imagine a friend calling you up being like, hey, I, I, I really need you to right now. I really, like, literally is bawling. And it's like, hey, like, I just experienced a breakup. Or, hey, I'm really having a hard day. Imagine you saying, oh, wait, stop. I actually don't have the emotional capacity to have this conversation right now. Like, I get in rare cases that this might happen. But imagine saying that to your friend, to your good friend, who you depend on and who depends on you. Like, it just doesn't, there's not very... <laughs> It just doesn't seem like there are many practical applications to the whole, I'm protecting my peace from the people in my life who I'm supposed to be investing in. Like, you can't, again, you cannot complain about not having friends. You can't complain about not having a community when you do not pour into your friendships or your community. When you isolate yourself. That is not, you can't, like, 
Like, there are some things that are thrust upon us, but there are some things that we bring upon ourselves. That brings me to my second point, because I'm not trying to scold nobody. I'm not nobody's mama. I'm not nobody's nanny. But I understand, like, I still, I do have empathy toward us autistics and other neurodivergent folks who decide to just shy away from relationships altogether because relationships don't tend to be kind to us because of the dynamics involved when you are on the spectrum and having to guess what people want from you and the majority of people not telling you and just finding really harmful ways to communicate indirectly. And that embarrassment, like the embarrassment of someone just like ghosting you, not like a romantic partner or romantic potential partner, but a friend, a friend. The things that neurotypical people complain about dealing with in romantic relationships are things that autistic people experience all the time. Like the fear that y'all have of dating is the fear that we have of talking to people. Like the same feeling you get where you're like, my boyfriend could secretly be cheating on me or could have like a secret family. Or maybe he could be secretly manipulating me the whole time. Or maybe he never liked me in the first place. All of those fears we feel when it comes to friendships. It's the same feeling. And I do not think neurotypical people can relate to that. The stakes are so much higher for us. Because frankly, we've seen some things that a lot of y'all would not be able to handle. We've been treated in ways that y'all would not believe. Like, you simply would not believe. Like, I got some stories. And if you meet an autistic person, an adult autistic person, they have some tragic stories that you literally would not believe about friendships and about how people have hurt them in friendships. Like, well, I don't know if I can say that word on here because you do, but it feels like you're being, it feels, it feels like you're not alive. It feels like you were not alive. But... When you do survive it, it's pretty great. The last thing I want to highlight is like the idea that socializing or being social or being in a community is to a lot of people a symbol of being a good person or being a credible human being. And I just want to assure you that it's not. It's not that having friends, having community makes you a good person. It's that it makes your life a lot better. Now, mind you, there are plenty of bad people. There are plenty of people who are unkind who have a ton of friends. So the amount of friends you have is not necessarily a reflection of how good of a person you are or how deserving you are of community. And I I don't even know what that means, like who deserves community, right? I don't even know what that means. But you deserve to feel taken care of and you deserve to feel loved. And I don't care what the police told you. I don't care. I don't care how, how backwards your friendships were. You deserve to feel loved. Now, the last thing I'll leave you with is the fact that I personally, you don't have to believe this, but I personally believe in divine intervention, right? Breaking news has shown us this. Timing is everything. Timing is everything. Being in the right place at the right time can change your life. Or being at the wrong place in the wrong time can change your life. And I will say, knowing all that we know now, if you're not invited to the big party, it might just be because you don't really need to be there. All right, that's all I have for you. Next mini-sode is going to be dropped in a couple of days. Stay tuned for that. A reminder, these are just audio mini-sodes, but the regular link podcast episodes are going to have video as well. Thanks for joining me. Be blessed. Stay weird. Bye-bye. Mwah.